Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking through Cisco Packet Tracer 9.4.2.8. This is a skills integration challenge. So to begin I'll go ahead and get our Packet Tracer activity opened up here. Give it a reset just to make sure we're starting fresh. And try to make it so everybody can see everything on here. We have our pre-set up network here that we're going to be working with. And the scenario is that we're going to finish the addressing scheme. We're going to configure routing. We're going to set up a named access control list. And then we're going to apply that access control list appropriately. Um, so we do have the 172.16.128.0 slash 19 here. We need to subdivide that into a, two equal networks. One that's going to go out here and one that's going to go out here. I'm not going to walk through all the steps involved in getting that subnetting done. Um, once you have that done though, we do need to assign the last usable address of the second subnet to the Gigabit Ethernet 00, 0 interface on the branch router. So let's see which interfaces we have. There's G01 and this will be G00. So our first subnet is going to come out here and our second subnet is going to come out here. And to begin, I'll just jump in and get into the command line interface. Um, they don't have the completed addressing scheme here. You're supposed to fill this section out. Let me pull mine over so everybody can see the completed addressing table. If you need to, you can pause this right here, copy these down, and we'll continue on. So we're going to start with the Ethernet G00. And we're going to give it the IP address from our table. With the subnet 255.255.240.0. And then we want to jump over to G01 and give it an IP address. And this should be the last usable on its network. Alright, so document that in your addressing table. And configure it the way we just have. Then we want to configure B1 for the appropriate addressing using the first available address on the network to which it is attached. Let's minimize that. So B1 is our PC here. And we want to come to its desktop, IP configuration. If I went a little too quick, IP is the top left. We will use a static IPv4 address. It will be 172.16.144.1. The subnet will be 255.255.240.0. And the default gateway will be 172.16 dot 159.254. Close that so that it saves that to the PC and then we can continue on. <coughs> Our next step is to configure the HQ router and the branch router with OSPF according to the following criteria. We're going to use process ID 1. We're going to advertise all three attached networks but we will not advertise the link to the internet. So for HQ, we're going to advertise these three, but not this link. And on branch, we're going to advertise all three here. Once we've done that, we want to configure the appropriate interfaces as passive. So for our HQ router, that will be G01 and G00. These should both be passive. We don't need to be broadcasting our routing information out across these networks. And then on branch, it'll be the same thing these two interfaces, G00 and G01, will be passive because we don't want to broadcast our routing information out to these networks either. Alright, so I'm going to begin in the HQ router, command line interface, and get into the global configuration mode, and get started with the OSPF1. 
first thing we want to do, it doesn't mention it, I'm going to go ahead and cover my bases and assign a router ID. And then we'll start by giving the networks that are directly attached. So we have the 172.16.0.0 slash 18. So we have a network here. The 172.16.64.0.18, a network here. Then we have this 192.168 as a slash 30. So the commands for that, 172.16.0.0 is our first network. And then use your wildcard subnet mask here. I'll move my mouse out of the way. And assign it to area 0. Then we want to do our second directly attached network. And then our router to router network. And then we want to configure the appropriate interfaces for passive. So the command for that is right here, passive interface. You can always hit tab to complete the command. G00, G01, and our serial interface that leads out to the internet, S001. Alright, so we have OSPF set up on HQ. Let's set up OHP OSPF on branch router. So we're going to be following kind of the same thing. We want to go ahead and get out of that interface. Router OSPF1. Again, it doesn't mention it. I'm going to go ahead and cover my bases and give it an ID. And then the three directly attached networks. And if you're wondering how he, I came up with this network address, it was from subnetting this out. So it looks like a slash 19, but your wildcard will not be a slash 19. Because we've broken that into two distinct networks. Um, one thing my class has done is that they've broken this down into a slash 21, I believe, and so their wildcard was 0015, 255. And as long as these networks are the same size, you should still be able to get 100% completion. Because the instructions do not say they have to be a specific size, they just have to be the same size. So as long as your network sizes are the same between those two, you should be fine. I want to do our second network here. Except there's a 31, 255, area 0. And when we're doing this, we actually assign this first network, 172.16.128.0, is actually going to be down here. And 172.16.144.0 is up here. Alright, the third network that we need to set up here is the router to router. And then we want to configure those gigabit Ethernet interfaces as passive. Let me see, since we added in this third OSPF network here, we're getting this message that we have loaded and set up that connection correctly from loading to full, which means we have communication between these two routers now with that OSPF. Alright. So now we have that completed. We need to hop back over to the HQ router for the next portion, which is to set a default route that directs all traffic to the S001 interface. So we want to be just in the global command uh, global configuration mode. There we are, and so we want to broad. We want to set up a default route across here to the internet for all traffic, 
and then we want to redistribute this link out to our branch router. So to do that, we need to begin first by creating that route. And we're just going to say all traffic is going to be routed to S001. And then we want to come back into our router OSPF1 and give it the command default information originate which tells it to go ahead and broadcast that connection to the other router alright so most of our configuration is complete we do need to set up our access control lists and look that over Alright, so on the branch router, we need to design a named access list. The list should be called HQ Server. And this access list is designed to prevent any computers attached to the G00 network. So this network from accessing the HQ Server.pka here at this address. All other traffic should be permitted, and we want to configure this on the appropriate router, apply it to the appropriate interface, and in the, the appropriate direction. So we've already decided we want to put this on branch. We want it close to the source that's trying to get the information. So if we have B1, for example, trying to connect to the server, we want to put this access control list as close to B1 as possible. So it'll be on this interface for traffic coming into this interface. So we'll start with branch. And we want to first start by creating the access list. It should be an extended called HQ server. We want to deny IP access from that entire network. We want to prevent that entire network from reaching 172.16.01. So nothing on that network can reach that server, but they'll still be able to reach anything else that they need to. And that network is on the G00 interface. So we want to go into configuring that interface and give it the IP access group. HQ server in. And so that applies that ACL on this interface to any traffic coming into the router on that interface. Should be sitting at about 70% completion. And then the last thing that we want to do is to set up a named access list on the HQ router. It, the access list should be called branch server and it should prevent all computers attached to the G00 on HQ which is this network so everything on this network should be blocked from accessing the branch server for both HTTP and HTTPS all other traffic should be permitted and we want to apply it on the correct interface in the correct direction on the HQ router so let's jump into the command line interface ahead and get back to the global configuration mode and start again by creating the ACL with the correct name. We want to deny everything on the 64 nope just kidding so we want to deny anything from that network so all or any from that network from reaching the host 172 there we are 16 128 1 
So instead of specifying this specific network, we're going to say everything on this interface, which is just going to be that network anyways. So any on that interface should not be able to reach the branch server at 172.16.128.1. We see it there. And we want to do EQ. You can do www or you can do 80. Either way, it's going to block HTTP. And then we want to do the same thing to block HTTPS. And we want to give a permit IP any any so all other traffic can flow through. And we want to apply that to the G00 interface with the IP access group branch server in command. Alright, and we should be seeing 100% completion now. And if you want to test that, you can create a couple of simple PDUs just to make sure that, for example, HQ1 cannot reach the branch server. But HQ2 should be able to. So that shows that this network is blocked from reaching that server. And then our computer B1 should not be able to reach the HQ server. But computer B2, being on a different network, should be able to reach that server. There we are. And if needed, these should be able to reach the internet still. So we didn't block any internet access, we've just kind of blocked these servers from these two networks, respectively. Um, I think that about covers everything here, so if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I hope to all see you all in my next video.